Imagine, if you will, a thoughtful sci-fi book, a science fiction with some thought to it. Imagine the main character, who is certainly not an author stand-in, and his love interest certainly not a woman the author has ever loved, lusted after. Arrive deep within the heart of the Nebula machine. They have come across many perils. Most of them, actually, they just talk through. But don't worry about that. Don't think about that. Don't think about the fact that they have not actually fought anything, even though there's a war going on outside the galaxy. No, no, don't think about that. Just think about the adventure and the character who is certainly not the author's self-insert. They go deep into the Nebula machine, and there they meet God. And then God tells them to have lots of sex, because, you know, procreation is great. And the main character looks over to the female character, raises an eyebrow, or some nonsense. Or maybe the machine god just doesn't care about fleshy creatures, and their pitiful, organic ways. Or maybe it's just a mad lunatic sitting in the middle of a dead star messing around with people because, eh, <laughs> why not? Ah, that's, that's the real key to it. Why not? Uh, I've read too many of those books where, or manga, or movies, or what have you, where the answer comes down to it, and it is not a Christian answer at all. It's not even an answer based on reality. It's whatever the author wants. You see, that's very important. Whatever they want. Consider that the mo uh, majority of science fiction authors have been atheist or non-Christians, uh, or rather they have acted like they are non-Christians. Uh, they certainly write like they are non-Christians, whatever their beliefs are. You might think that these god machines are a sort of, ooh, how do I want to put it, the ideal world of the author, but even then... It's not so high-minded and holy. Instead, it's just whatever gets their dick wet, if you'll pardon the expression. Hmm. Some authors like John C. Wright and Paul Anderson and others were very Christian, uh, but the majority were not. The majority rebel against God very explicitly. Uh, Heinlein had his sexual mores, uh, Clark hated God uh, and retired to diddle kids on Sri Lanka. Uh, and Asimov uh, may have been, at the very least, a sex pest, but his son was one of the most prolific child pornographers the West has ever seen. You might imagine where these things come from, these ideas. Of course, the, <coughs> of course the connection is the fact that these were sexual perverts. Uh, and this 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 disgusting trend continues on like a giant uh, red alert uh, throughout the bridge of science fiction. Uh, many of the things that come from Star Trek often have strange sexual overtones. Uh, many of the writers are often caught up in scandal uh, that lead to lawsuits and more uh, and worse. Uh, whole lives ruined. Of course, you can read. Uh, the Last Closet, um, by the daughter of Marion Zimmer Bradley, uh, to read more of the sordid details. Uh, but it comes down to a rebellion against God and a pursuit of worldly pleasure. Writers like Jerry Pornell, while they were never quite, shall we say, explicit, certainly put in Christian iconography, symbolism, churches uh, that worked to great extent and provided spiritual answers to the characters within their novels which was sorely lacking in the novels of shall we call them the moderns and the postmoderns uh in the moat in god's eye which is probably my favorite science fiction book there is a priest who is a major character and he performs his duties admirably 
Uh, and he is, in fact, a very well and good representation of a priest and of a religious order within, uh, you know, a science fiction world. John C. Wright, of course, has his eternal Catholic Church in the Count Escaton series, uh, though it is absent in his um, Golden uh, Ecumene uh, series, though he was maybe forgiven for it as he was an atheist at the time. Uh, though you can see that the need for the main character of the Golden Ecumenity was a spiritual need. He needed a certain thing that could only satisfy his soul, and that is the spread of the world of the peoples of mankind to the stars. Uh, considering others, uh, the Dune series pretends it has religious orders, where in fact they only have ste uh, scheming court factions, uh, some with more genetical power than others. Uh, you consider things like uh, Kevin Anderson's uh, space opera uh, Septet, uh, which has church and spiritualness, but it's more an ecological thing. It's more whimsical than it is an actual set of beliefs that can be followed uh even though characters do die the death heroically uh following them or if you look at things like steampunk and other uh side genres of science fiction these the, they don't really have a church or they don't have a religion uh or if they do it's always uh antagonistic negative um oppressive it's always the evils of whatever the year was I can pretty much tell what era a book came from by its, uh, how shall we say, whatever the religious r leaders are railing against. In the uh, post-Campbell era, uh, it was free love, baby. Uh, and then when it comes to the more modern stuff, it's like, oh, well, you don't really need to be married. Oh, you don't really need that Christ guy. Oh, you don't really need this. You can live without a strict definition of morals, morality, nobility, and more. Uh, then you go on to the early 90s, uh, well, late 90s uh, to early aughts, it's homosexuality. Uh, and then you go on to another one, it's it's homosexuality, except also like uh, changing your genetics, changing certain things about it. And then, of course, in modern times, it's whatever phobia you want to say. Uh, things like immigration and fear of the other was added in, I want to say, ninety uh, late 90s. Uh, early tens uh, in there is a sort of like thing underneath it uh, as um, as shall we say the Japanese tiger declined in power within the cyberpunk genre uh, more and more it wasn't Asians who were the uh, or, or shall I say Orientals were the the focus of this technology stuff often it was Middle Easterners, Africans, that sort of thing. Like, you could see a change in the demographics of the characters. Side characters. Remember, uh, no good author puts in a self-insert. And I would never, ever accuse any science fiction author of ever self-inserting anything in their life. Um, <laughs> uh, so when we get to it, like, they, they want to have their anti-god. Uh, that's what it comes down to. These these AIs, these cores, these these things. They want a certain amount of morality. This is the point of of this whole section. They want a separate morality than the one that forces them to keep their dick in their pants and to not sleep around and to preserve things like culture and love and more. Their god machines often say things that are anti-god, anti-holiness, anti-love, anti-life. Uh, there was a manga that had a long run, uh, very violent. I can't remember the name of it. And honestly, I'm fine not knowing, not remembering the name of it. It was one of those bloody early aughts shown in bloodbaths. Uh, and at the end of it, they meet quote-unquote god. And God remakes one of their friends who they lost along the way and then said life is meaningless and killed somebody else. Uh, the, the thing that comes up for me is that they did not quite, they asked questions of this God thing, but they did not question the existence of this God thing. What makes it God? Just because you can make life? Please. There are perverts whose socks have more life than certain points in Earth's eco ecosystem. 
all right there there are there are horrible things living in the drains of my sink uh that have more life in them than what you just demonstrated the the ability to you know transform matter had already been demonstrated in the series the ability to bring back people to life had already been demonstrated to the series they it was like you go up to like david blaine the magician and you have just seen a guy on the street perform a pretty sweet card trick and then david blaine performs the same card trick except he's doing it while he's insulting you and then you get these giant AI machines, these these things that are designed to replace God that's been there since the beginning of the universe. They've got the extinct species roaming all over its little things. All oh, it's 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 so wise, you know. And like I said, all they really do is is justify the sexual mores of the author, justify his morality. It is not even an outside morality. It's not even a Hindu or Muslim or whatever morality. It's whatever gets the author's dick wet. You know, there's no other way to say it. There's no, or, uh, you know, lubed up and uh, covered in uh, unspeakable stuff or whatever the author fancies. Uh, and I certainly wouldn't claim that certain authors roaming around today uh, fancy things that aren't quite grown up yet. Or, uh, like Asimov, they prefer things that are too grown. This disgusting trends are always outed by their literature. And the thing that gets me is that the computers are often their modern idea of what a perfect being would be. But the thing is, they never meet like an AI who's just a space racist. You know, like... It, it <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, thank goodness. You, you humans only have two legs. Yeah, we only have two legs. That's the only amount of legs a species could have. Any other amount of legs disgusts me. Can you imagine it? Tripods roaming around in three legs? Disgusting. Four legs. What are you, a dog? Stand up on your hind legs. Ugh. Or even worse. Anything above... Six legs or more. Insects bugs so is that why you wiped out the bug people of zendikron 9 yep a just because just because you hate multiple limb species yep and you guys two beautiful limbs wonderful so many skin colors on your limbs beautiful and only two hands oh oh <laughs> you know they don't do anything like that they don't do anything funny they don't do anything that actually would be madness. They don't do anything but their perfection. If they try for madness, they do not remove the godhood from the machine. It's still a god machine, except it's crazy. And they maybe they introduce a, a virus or something stupid like that. Like a god machine wouldn't have antivirus software. You know, he didn't re-up his Norton a million years ago. Therefore... <laughs> therefore you know he just gets defeated i've never been satisfied by these stories and i hope that you aren't either the answers we don't we won't find answers within some stupid omnipotent quote unquote omnipotent uh omniscient ai that sat in the middle of a dead star for a million years it can't even escape its gravitational beam nobody heard about it you know we had to follow a cool set of clues and riddles and mysteries to the uh, uh, <laughs> it's one of my least favorite tropes in science fiction uh but it is one of the most telling when it comes to the author's morality and the author's ability to tell a good story if an author brings up a god machine and it says anything other than scripture, you know that this author is just justifying how they view the world, how they want to be gratified, and how much sex should they be getting from their fans. Disgusting. Be sure to make better science fiction. And us at the superversive uh, cadre of writers certainly, certainly don't do that and i say that ironically but of course i don't mean any irony of it you cannot be superversive if you're gratifying your base desires 
I'll have some links to some fun rides uh, down below. Do check them out. Check out Pinkerton's Ghost. It's written by myself. Uh, no matter how sorted it gets, the dragon will be slain. Those of you who know, know. Thank you for listening, and I hope to see you at another video.